Hi, my name is Simon. I'm co-founder of NoLoco, the no-code platform for teams to instantly create apps around their business data and tools like Airtable, spreadsheets, and other data sources. Today, I'm going to show you how you can create an app from your Airtable base in just a few minutes. Firstly, I'm going to set up my app. So I'll choose a unique app name here. Then I'm going to choose the color theme for the sidebar. So I can go with any color here. I'm going to stick with gray for now. And I'll choose a logo as well. So I've chosen a white logo for the sidebar here. If I go to the next page, I can also choose a logo for the login and registration screen as well. So I might choose a slightly different logo here that might look better. Perfect. So now we're creating the app. Now I'm going to connect my Airtable, which is the data source for this app. For this tutorial, I'm using the real estate transaction management template from Airtable, which has properties, contacts, interactions, and transactions as well. So firstly, I'm going to grab my API key from my account settings in Airtable. I'll head back to NoLoco and pop that in here. Now I'm going to grab my shared base link. So I'm going to go back to the Airtable base itself, click on the share button, click on the base option here, and scroll down to create a shared link to the whole base and create a private read-only link. So I'm going to copy this and bring back to Noloco and put it in here. Noloco will now analyze the different tables in the base and automatically create a UI around the data. All right, so that's ready to go. All right, so we can see that Noloco has automatically generated a UI for each of the tables in the Airtable base. So we have properties, contacts, transactions, and interactions as well. And the data is all there. To double check, we can go over to the data tab. We also have default tables for users and companies as well. And you can create other collections too directly within NoLoco, or you can create them in your Airtable base and they'll be synced automatically. You can also connect to any third party source by API and pull in data from third parties as well. For now, let's go back to the UI. Let's say we wanted to change the layout of the properties view here. The table works fine, but maybe I'd like a cards layout instead. So I'm going to click to edit this. So under display, I can choose a different layout. So I'm going to choose cards. And then perhaps I want the image to be the first thing that people see here. So I'm going to drag that to the top. And then perhaps I don't need to show some of this information, like the link to the net sheet here or the listing start date, for example. And then I might want to add some nice inline filters. For example, if I wanted to filter by the neighborhood to make it more easy to find properties by neighborhood, I can add that filter. So this is pretty good, but maybe I want to add another view where I only show active properties that are for sale. So I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna clone the properties page. And I'm going to call my new page Active Properties. And I can choose another icon here as well. That'll do for now. So now I can click on this new view I've created and I'm going to add a filter. So I want to show all properties but I also want to filter them by status. So I'm going to choose to add a filter on the status column here. And I only want to show active properties. All right, so now I've added a view that filters properties and only shows active ones to the user. And I can also change the header here. So it says active properties, just so we know where we are. So 
So I'm happy with the way this looks, but let's say I now want to control who should be able to see this page. So I know from my Airtable that I have different types of contacts or users. So I'm gonna go ahead and add different user roles. So I go to settings and user roles. I see that by default, I have a user role and a team admin role. And of course I'm the team admin here. I'm gonna add another role. I'm gonna add an agents role. I'm gonna add a buyer role as well. I'm also going to add a user list. So I already have my user's information in Airtable, including their first name, last name, and email in the contacts table. So I'm just gonna tell NoLoco that these users already exist there. So I'll firstly choose their email address field, their first name field, and their last name field as well. And this is in the contacts table as I specified here. I'm also gonna assign a default user role. And I'm going to say that by default, users should be down as buyers. All right, so that's now saved. I'm now gonna head back to my app and control the visibility settings on the properties page. So let's say I only want agents to be able to view the active properties page. So I'm going to enable layout editing again. And I'm going to go into my visibility settings here. So as opposed to all user types being able to see this page, I only want users with the agent role to be able to see this page. And I don't have this user role, and that's why it is now faded out. But as I'm a team admin, I can, of course, still see everything because I should be able to see and edit all pages. But let's say I want to take it a step further and want to control what data different user roles can actually access. So I'm going to go to the data tab and for the properties table, I'm going to enable permissions. This allows me to define by user role what fields and records they should have access to. So should they be able to read, update, or create records, and what fields they should have access to as well. So for properties, perhaps I want agents to be able to read and update all their properties, but maybe they shouldn't be able to create new records. So I'm gonna create the agents permission here. So perhaps agents should be able to access all records, but maybe they should only be able to read and update existing records, but shouldn't be able to create new ones. So I'm gonna save that permission. And then I'm also gonna create a new permission level for buyers. And perhaps buyers shouldn't be able to access all records, but shouldn't be able to access their own records, i.e. the properties that belong to them. So I'm gonna say that these buyers should only have access to records where that record's buyer is equal to that user. And I can also control what they should have access to here as well. So maybe they shouldn't be able to create new records. And I can also control at field level if there's certain information that I don't want them to be able to see. For example, the competitive market analysis. All right, so I'm now gonna save my new buyer permission here as well. To check if everything is working as expected, we can actually preview the app as any user. So I'm going to go ahead and change the user so I can preview as one of the agents. So I can see now that the active properties tab has become visible. So they can see all the active properties here, but they don't have the ability to create any records. So note how the add new button has disappeared. If I stop viewing as gal or this agent here, I can see for other users who would have such permissions that they do have the ability to add a new property. Similarly, if I preview the app as a buyer, they can only see their own properties and don't have the ability to create new properties either nor do they have access to the active properties page that should only be visible to agents. So we've added quite a lot of functionality so far. Perhaps we want to take a step further. Let's add some automations and workflows. So I might want to notify all the buyers of a property when the property status has updated to closed, for example. So to do this, I'm going to use our workflows. 
and create a property workflow. So I'm going to trigger this workflow when the property record is updated. And I'm only going to continue if the property status has been updated to closed. So I'm going to click done here. Then I want to choose to send to all buyers associated with the property because this is a many to many relationship and there can be more than one. So I'm going to choose for each item in a list and choose the properties buyers. Finally, I'm going to choose to send an email. I could also choose to trigger a webhook if I wanted to. But in this situation, I want to send an email. Here, I can pull in dynamic data. For example, the buyer's email address. And I can also personalize the subject or the body of the message as well, if I wanted to. I'm just gonna add another couple of details here. So I've added some personalization here, addressing the recipient by name, uh, calling out the name of their property, and also giving them a specific link to be brought to that properties page within the app as well. As well as building UI around your existing data, you can also leverage Noloco's powerful ready-made modules like billing, file sharing, messaging, and forms. So if you want to integrate with Stripe or QuickBooks, create subscriptions or invoices from your app, the billing module might be for you. And you can go to our integrations or payments page here to connect your Stripe or QuickBooks account. If you want to centralize your file sharing, you can use our file sharing module and even connect it to your Google Drive as well if all your files are already there and you want to continue using it. If you want to centralize communication with your customers or partners, you can use our messaging module. When you send these messages, users get an email notification and they can reply to the message directly from there without having to come into the app. And finally, you can use our native form builder so you can create any type of form with short text field, long text, multiple choice, file uploads, etc. All you have to do is click save, and then choose to send it to particular users. Finally, when you're ready to launch, you can go ahead and click to publish and also connect your custom domain as well. If you have business data that you're looking to share with your team, customers, or partners, and you want to create a beautiful app in just a few minutes by writing a line of code, head over to noloco.io.